Welcome to the gauntlet. By now you've watched the season finale of the show and you've watched this gauntlet, the final challenge, and you were able to see that Aaron and I won. So here on Irene Iron Travels, we wanted to show you a little bit behind the scene of the gauntlet, each of the three different games that went into the gauntlet, and what the heck was going on through our minds during the challenge. Let's start with game number one, the water bladder challenge. We had two different stations, one station back here and the other station up there. Back here is where we each had a side. It was us, Aaron and Chris, versus Howard and Caitlin. How are you guys feeling? We're really happy that, we were really happy that, first of all, to be on this entire series, just to be in it was yeah. really great. And then when we made it to like the semifinalists where it was four teams. Yeah, we were excited for we that. We were excited like, for that. That's a big accomplishment mm -hmm. yeah. just to even get there. And now we're here and it's just like, whoa. And you know, going into the very final challenge can be stressful, but it really, it's like, you gotta take a step back and say, the fact that we made it here is really amazing. Yeah. And just like focus on like how much it took to get to right here. Right, to this point, yeah. to this moment. And that just lifts us up. Yeah, and we're really glad it's you guys. It was funny because we actually all learned yesterday that when they asked us on day one who our biggest competition was from the other team, we both said each other. Yeah. And so it's really yeah. funny that it's come down yeah, to it. here we are. <laughs> gotta give a huge shout out to Howard and Caitlin. They are not only great friends of ours, but they were also super fun to compete with. We were neck to neck the whole time, minute by minute, down to the wire, and we couldn't have asked for better contestants to go against. However, we do need to give a shout out to the entire team, red and blue. All eight teams were really close during this entire event, and every single person busted their butt and did a great job. So now let's get into it with the details. This was the area that we had to fill the buckets with. And I believe each team had six pitchers to work with. After filling these pitchers with water, we had to run them over to our pallet station. And the pallet station is where the pump and everything went together from scratch. Our strategy on the red team was for us to get started. We wanted Aaron to jump right into those parts that were on the table to wrap his head around what the heck each part was and get his idea on how he was going to assemble the pump. Confession time, I was very nervous about putting the pump together. If you remember back to the very first episode of RVM Plugged, during that water challenge, we had the whole team working together. And also we had the NRVTA tech help us put that pump system together. And my role during that challenge was just running the water in the bucket. So I honestly didn't even get a good look at the whole assembly. So I didn't want to alarm Chris and tell her that I wasn't sure if I even knew how to put that together, but that's why I went over there right away because I knew I would need some extra time to get that thing put together and get this challenge going. While he was doing that, I came straight over here to get a head start on water. We knew that during the first original challenge, we had eight members. We had a split group, part of the people working on the pump, and most of the people were working on carrying pitchers back and forth that day. So we thought that the water might be our bottleneck, and boy, were we right. We were constantly running from this spot here over to our water station over here, and it ends up being about 20 steps which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're going half a gallon at a time in 96 degrees in the heat after you've been exhausted all week, it was really a tough challenge. And I've got to say it was smart for them to start with that challenge because it wiped everybody out. We were so red, we were so sweaty, we were thirsty, we were hot, but we didn't quit. Looking into the parts here, we had the pallets. Of course, that was the bed for our 60 gallon bladder and then we had a series of like hoses and we had adapters clamps that Aaron 
worked his brain on and got everything connected. So with the water that we collected in the pitchers, we used the five gallon bucket and we poured all of the water from these buckets into the five gallon bucket. From there, we used this tubing to connect with the pump and it pumped right into the bladder. So the first step was getting that tube primed, getting the airflow in there, getting it to actually suck the water from the five gallon bucket, and then making sure that we kept water in there so that it wouldn't run dry. And we did find very quickly that our bottleneck was the water. We were only able to keep our five gallon bucket about half full at all times. Really, it would have been ideal to keep that all the way to the top so that you had a little bit of wiggle room with it lowering. So our strategy with these buckets was to just get them over here as quickly as possible to make sure that we didn't run dry there. And that meant that we were carrying half pitchers at a time instead of full pitchers because we just didn't have time to sit and wait for this whole thing to fill up because that would have run dry. So our endurance definitely came into play there since we were making double the amount of trips, constantly running back and forth. Aaron and I were back to back. Neither one of us stopped at all. The occasional guzzle of water from the pitcher is all we did for a break. And I think that that saved us. And it was really like, we were proud of Howard and Caitlin, they were working their butt off too. You could tell they were pushing every ounce of energy they had. Everybody was trying to keep cool, sweat was dripping, and the sun was just blasting. Howard and Caitlin actually got their pump assembled quicker than we did, and they started pumping just a little bit before us. And then somehow along the way, our pump started pumping faster, which was really surprising because we could all see that our pump had a little bit of air coming in the tube the entire time. It was like we were sucking a little bit of air, but we still had a stronger flow. So we barely filled up quicker than them. I think it was definitely like within the 30 to 60 second range. And then we raced over to the solar section where we could get right into challenge number two, where we were hoping that we would have a little bit of an edge from the head start and in a game where Aaron knew what he was doing right away. And this was game number two. And it was really exciting because actually in the first original solar challenge, it was Howard and Aaron both being the coach. So they both came fresh off of this challenge. We knew that Aaron knew what he was doing, but we also knew that Howard knew what he was doing. So that made it like straight away, head to head. This one is gonna be close. We were neck to neck. We chose to leave the solar panels up like this and then we later found out they had to be down, so we lost a little bit of time on that. Other than that- That was my fault. That was Aaron's fault. But one advantage that we had during this challenge part of the gauntlet was that Aaron no longer had to be the coach, which meant he could just jump in and do all of the brain work himself. And our approach was that he would be the brains, I would be the bronze. So I would come in and I would tighten all the nuts and do some of the nuts and stuff while he was making some bigger connections that I didn't know how to do. And I think that worked really well. And thankfully, like Chris mentioned, I did just do this challenge a few days earlier. So everything was super fresh in my mind. When I did the original challenge earlier on in the game show, it had been almost a full year before I had put together one of our solar systems. And so I was, I, I knew it, but I still needed that little refresher. Thankfully, that really helped allow us to get back into this game. Howard and Caitlin did a great job at this section though. They actually got to it second but they finished it right before us. So I think we were uh, a couple seconds behind them. And then it was on to the final challenge, which was the fire building contest.
So they got a head start on looking for the flint that was necessary to win challenge number three. We were about 30 seconds behind them and then as soon as we got that inverter powered up and we got the green light from Todd, we ran out there to go find that flint. When we started looking for the flint, Aaron and I spread apart from each other so that we could go different areas. I straight away came up here and I was looking everywhere on this deck. I was even looking like down in the koi fish pond, the little fountain feature, looking high and low. I was looking underneath these stairs a lot. And really, I was looking for the same packaging and the same orange string that I saw in the original fire challenge, which actually wasn't the right thing to be looking for because in this gauntlet challenge, Todd removed the flint from the package, cut that string off to make it a little bit more difficult to find, and it was. So I spread some time over here. Aaron was looking on the opposite side over here, looking in between cactuses, looking underneath leaves, really just looking high and low. And after I had exhausted that fountain area, I went back this way because this area was actually where um, Caitlin and Howard started. They were on this end and I really didn't want to be right up in their nose while we were looking for it. But where I ended up finding the flint was right in here along these walls in this little Texas bird bath fountain. So I didn't even know what the flints looked like. I pulled out the two bars. There were two flints in there and they looked like metal rulers to me. I had no idea if it was right, but I thought this looks like it doesn't belong here and it definitely looks like it could be the flint. I thought that the two pieces worked together. So I held them up. I looked at Todd. <laughs> Todd said, put one back. So right away I knew it that these were the flints and not only did I find one, but I found two. And not only did I find two, I verbally and audibly gave it away for Howard to sneak right in behind me and pick up his flint. So it was so close neck to neck, both teams went to the fire with their flint at the same time. So Howard had actually already picked out a side of the fire pit. He picked out that side and I don't know exactly what he prepped over there, but he definitely did some prep work on this board. We had this board to work with. We had these large sticks. These are residual from the fire. And then we also had a pile of small sticks for kindling. Also, we had another little substance that was required to start the fire. I don't know what the exact term is, but it's a fire starter. It's more flammable and it's definitely needed to get the sticks going. So we had this in a little bag and we had a whole kit and the rule was you could not use anything for the fire that was outside of your kit here. So having that rule in place allowed us to not have like a really rapid fire like we did in the first contest where pine needles just flamed the flames up. So this was more of like a, you have to get your sticks burning and you can't just use flammable objects to touch this. So we let Aaron take charge on this challenge as well because he is the fire maker in the family. So he took that flint, he got everything started and it was a neck to neck challenge in this portion of the gauntlet as well. I must say I was a little bit nervous because Howard and Caitlin got their fire ripping a little bit earlier than we did and Aaron identified where he could have done better was like pulling the start stuff apart so that it had better airflow in it. But once he went in and he pulled that apart, it fired right up, he started feeding it with air and the fire was growing. It was so neck to neck. We honestly didn't know which team was going to touch and make contact first. And we saw it happening. I said, it's touching and we won. And it was so close. We had to go back to the video for an additional look just to make sure that it was a win for the red. It was a photo finish and it was neck to neck. Thank you so much for coming and seeing behind the scenes of RV Unplugged. Stay tuned for season two and check out the rest of our channel for more of our RV travels.